All right. So I told you something about how identity worked back when I grew up in India. What do you think of that? Well, to recount the story, you were saying that in your neighborhood, as sure. we would say around here. So if you went to the bank, if your you know if your parents or your uncle went to the bank, all the people there, all the bank tellers would know you, and they would know your family because you know it's tightly knit and there's lots of. Uh, Lots of relationships between people, and now sure. I remember, as I'm speaking, I'm remembering why that is, which I'll get to. And uh, so you could basically, if your mother had an account, her brother could go there, and the teller would let him withdraw money because you know, as long as he had the withdrawal slip, the mother, yeah, yeah, yeah. signed it. I mean, basically, basically the identity checking, if you will, is just right. all in the relationships and local knowledge and everything. And part of why you're saying that one of the cultural reasons that happens is like you're always very nice to your neighbors like you live next to neighbors and and you essentially need to uh, you know maintain a good relationship with them and you talk with them all the time and people are always helping each other out if you will which you know I'm remembering my wife had a sociology degree and when they would study various sort of urban living environments there was similar dynamics going on that you know because you're you're in a highly dense situation that doesn't have a lot of mobility necessarily you get to be reliant on the community that you have and everything and then, and then you were also saying, you know, if you go to the grocery store, there's sort of like a tab, and you can put stuff on each other's tabs, and it, it is like the, you know, to to uh, American stuff, it's that quaint idea of business, of it's all personal based, and there's no, basically, there's no IT involved. <laughs> it's all, it's all identity management, if you will, is in someone's head, and so that's that's what I was thinking is, you know, that being able being able to do that with, uh, being able to do that sort of accounting based on relationships and human relationships shows you like how far like computational identity management needs to go in order to sort of do the same thing humans can do. Now I mean the problem with the model that I just went over, the, the human based ways, it doesn't really scale very well, right? I mean to use an old west metaphor, it makes snake oil salesmen really easy. Like an out of towner comes in and he can basically, you know, treat everyone like a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, not hucksters, because he's the huckster, a bunch of rubes. So like, you know, if, if the local network of identity management, the meatware network, doesn't have sophistication to find out when a fraudster is coming in, then it's a lot easier to take advantage of them. And of course you tar and feather them, which is not a pleasant experience if you can catch them. But, so there are different risks, but it is inter it's, hard, it's hard to know which one is a better risk than the, the other one. But it's definitely uh, that idea of basing your identity on the network of relationships that you have is I think it's a novel an interesting way to do identity stuff and there was actually you know we had this identity summit a while ago and one of the guys was talking about how there's an interesting intersection it was Mark Wall who was talking about there's a good intersection of risk management and identity where even if someone tells you and gives you the proper credentials of like there's someone you should ship something to them it's good to sort of check the other attributes like his example is like well if you're shipping something to the ukraine and you've never done that before maybe this is not really who you think it is and if you think about it like on the one hand that's just fraud detection and and stuff like that but it is if you generalize it it's another way of doing identity that's really based on a network if you will rather than a bunch of static attributes and uh i don't know it's kind of fascinating to think how things would change if you basically were always trying to do a little bit of shallow AI to, I guess, kind of algorithmically identify someone based on just trusting the attributes that they bring to you and, and their authentication. So I think, I think that's, uh, that's basically the full story of, of, of what you're, you, you went on about. I mean, are there, are there parts of that, like how the dynamics of that identity worked out that, that you would add to? Like, why, why is it that you would be nice to your neighbors? How did that come about? Oh, <laughs> that, I think we'll have to go beyond identity management to speak on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Wonderful. so let's uh, continue the identity access management conversations. We still need to next time. Yeah, absolutely.